everyone, it's Janine here, and in today's video we are going to be learning about the squeeze theorem. So we use the squeeze theorem when we're trying to determine the limit of an oscillating function like a sine or a cosine, and our traditional methods for evaluating limits algebraically like factoring or multiplying by the conjugate don't work. So the squeeze theorem tells us that if g of x is less than or equal to f of x is less than or equal to h of x when x is close to a, and the limit as x approaches a of g of x is equal to the limit as x approaches a of h of x is equal to l, then the limit as x approaches a of f of x is equal to l. And all this means is that if we can find two functions, g of x and h of x, to bound our function f of x, and we take the limit as x approaches a of our bounding functions g of x and h of x, and we find that value to be equal to l, then the limit as x approaches a of this function f of x must also be equal to l. Let's go ahead and take a look at some examples. So in this first example here, we have the limit as x approaches 0 of the function x squared sine of 1 over x. And we know from the graph of sine that sine is bounded between 1 and negative 1. So we can write the following. So we have negative 1 is less than or equal to sine of 1 over x is less than or equal to 1. And as our next step, what we want to do is we want to get this middle function here to match this function that we're taking the limit of. So we're going to multiply by an x squared. And so multiplying this out, we have negative x squared is less than or equal to x squared sine of 1 over x is less than or equal to x squared. And as our next step, we're going to take the limit of this entire inequality. So we have the limit as x approaches 0 of negative x squared is less than or equal to the limit as x approaches 0 of the function x squared sine of 1 over x is less than or equal to the limit as x approaches 0 of x squared. And from here, what we're going to do is use the substitution method to determine what this limit is equal to. So we're going to plug this 0 in for x. So we have negative 0 squared, which is equal to 0. And here, we're also going to use the substitution method. So we're going to plug in this 0 in for x. So we have 0 squared, which is equal to 0. And so now we can rewrite this inequality as follows. So we have 0 is less than or equal to the limit as x approaches 0, uh, the function x squared sine of 1 over x is less than or equal to 0. And so what this inequality is basically telling us is that the limit as x approaches 0 of the function x squared times sine of 1 over x is bounded between 0 and 0, and so therefore we can conclude that the limit as x approaches 0 of the function x squared sine of 1 over x is equal to 0. And let's go ahead and take a look at another example. In this next example here, we have the limit as x approaches 0 of the function x cubed cosine of pi over x. And so we know from the graph that cosine is bounded between negative 1 and 1. So we can write the following. So we have negative 1 is less than or equal to cosine of pi over x is less than or equal to 1. As our next step, what we're going to want to do is get this middle function here to match our function f of x from our limit here. So we're going to multiply by x cubed. And so multiplying this out, we have negative x cubed is less than or equal to x cubed times cosine of pi over x is less than or equal to x cubed. And next we're going to take the limit of this entire inequality. And so we have the limit as x approaches 0 of negative x cubed is less than or equal to the limit as x approaches 0 of x cubed cosine of pi over x is less than or equal to the limit as x approaches 0 of x cubed. So from here, we're going to use the substitution method to determine 
this limit. So we're going to plug the zero in for x, and so we have negative zero cubed, which is equal to zero. And we're also going to use the substitution method here to determine what this limit is equal to. So we plug in the zero in for x, and so we have zero cubed, which is equal to zero. And so we can rewrite this entire inequality as follows. So we have zero is less than or equal to the limit as x approaches zero of the function x cubed times cosine of pi over x is less than or equal to zero. And so here we have the inequality zero is less than or equal to the limit as x approaches zero of the function x cubed cosine of pi over x is less than or equal to zero. And so what this is telling us is that this limit here is bounded by zero and zero. And so from here we can conclude that this limit is equal to zero. So you have the limit as x approaches zero of the function x cubed cosine of pi over x is equal to zero. And so that is how you use the squeeze theorem to determine the limit of a function. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you next time.